Welcome, everybody. My name is Michael Markowski, and you're now a guest in my studio. So I'm so excited to have you here and to make a painting with me today. The painting we're going to make is one of the most famous paintings in all of art history, although you may or may not have ever seen it before. But you've definitely heard the name that the painting inspired, and that is Impressionism. So if you've ever heard of an Impressionist painting, an Impressionist picture, or you've ever heard somebody say, hey, that photograph looks like an Impressionist painting, it all begins right here today. We're going to look at the painting that Claude Monet painted in 1872 called Impression Sunrise. So let's get right to it i'm going to show you a few things on the computer that may or may not be helpful to you right off the top in case you um you want some of this to help you if you look in the um the video description below you'll see a link to a dropbox page and in that uh, dropbox link or or folder you'll see all of these different uh, files and inside these files have including let's say if we click on the Monet here you'll see the original painting and then you'll see a PDF and a JPEG version I've traced them so that you can print them out and you can transfer them onto the canvas I'm not gonna do that today just because today's painting um, I don't really think you know would really require it and I'm actually gonna gently in challenge you to see if you can do it without the, ah, I'm trying to enlarge come on let's do this all at once no, come on okay uh, let's try this I'm gonna challenge you to see if you can do this painting without drawing first now if you've already printed it out and, and you're ready to go don't worry about it but uh, so here's if you go on to the Dropbox, this is you'll see this image and then you'll see the traced version, which you can transfer on the canvas. And I've, I've done this a number of times throughout the past uh, 35 episodes. If you really want to, I went really in depth with the Andy Warhol episode, so you can watch that and, and see how it's done. OK, so uh, maybe before I get into that as well, let's just go back to come on. Um, there's also the Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group for just for people who are taking these classes to share their work with one another and um, and to post artwork that you're working on that you've made in class. And uh, there's a little questionnaire you have to answer to get in, get into the group because I'm doing that just so people. Um, if you notice on on the the public Facebook page. There's also it's bombarded with people trying to sell you tickets to this free <laughs> class. But anyway, I just thought I'd also mention while we're right here, last night I also recorded a second version of the Bob Ross painting we did last week. So this one here was the first one I did um, on last Thursday. And then this is the one that I redid last night. And they look very, very similar, but the difference is, is that with this one, I used some material called a retarder. And uh, let's just show you this right here. So I use this material and otherwise known as a slow dry medium. And I'm going to use a little bit of this today. Not a lot, but and you don't need it if you don't have it. Don't worry like, oh, I guess I can't do today's episode. I'm just going to show you, for those of you that haven't seen the, the Bob Ross video, I'll just do a really quick demo because we can use this for the background of today's picture. Anyway, let's kind of jump into Claude Monet. I'm just going to give it like a super, super brief uh, overview of his art. And I thought maybe before I talk about Claude Monet, I'm, I'll talk about who Claude Monet is isn't so we have some context for the kind of art he was making and why it literally caused a revolution and not just in art but i would say had repercussions that vibrated outward into the greater culture 
we, you wouldn't be watching this. I wouldn't be making this these videos if it wasn't for Claude Monet. Right? We'll get into why that happened here. But prior to Claude Monet, for a couple of hundred years in Europe, the only way for you to see art, unless you bought it, was to go to one of these things called a salon. And a salon was usually organized by one of the academies. And so if you wanted to learn to be an artist, you had to go to an academy, which is a lot... It's kind of like an art school, but um, they... Uh, they they I teach at an art school. I, I teach at Emily Carr University here in Vancouver. But we're, we really encourage people to explore their own interests, to try to come up with their own ideas and styles. At the academy, the exact opposite. It was there was a there was a correct way to do it. There's one way to do it. We're going to show you how to do it. If you don't do it, you're out. And the only way that you could show your work is by going through the academy taking the courses learning the one right way of doing it and then afterwards you're kind of guaranteed a um a career i would sort of compare it to like being a doctor right if you want to become a doctor you can't just post a you know thing in the newspaper put a sign on the door say hey i'm doing brain surgeries on saturday fifty dollars bring the coupon in and you get ten dollars off two for one brain surgeries right that would be ridiculous but that was the way art was for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years up until the impressionists right so you would have to go to a school learn the correct way to do it and then you were sort of licensed in a way to make art and sell art so what happened to people that didn't paint the right way they're out of luck right you could maybe make some paintings on your own but there's no one who would exhibit them Right, so you'd have these big exhibitions. Check this kind of thing out. This is how art was displayed at the salon. You'd have these huge rooms with paintings stacked up to the ceiling. In fact, sometimes the paintings would go up onto the ceiling. Sometimes right up here, they might be kind of leaning up against the ceiling. Like, look at this. <laughs> and so this is how you get here. If you ever heard the, the term hanging a picture salon style, Right? Or sometimes people organize you know, their photos of their family on a wall and kind of jam them right up close. That's a salon style way of exhibiting your work. So let's just kind of quickly zip around. Um, so some of the artists that, that exemplified the salon style of painting would be a fellow like this, William Adolf Bougereau, or Bougereau right? Um, and let me just zip down here because there's a, a few uh, nudie paintings there that might not be safe for work. So let me see. I'll go even further down. This is the kind of art that was seen in the salons. And so you see, this is mid-1800s, 1850s to 1890s. Um, and the salon, in a, in a way, still persists or, or salon-style neorealist painting. And so you have these paintings of, um, uh, you know, often they were sort of religious paintings or, um, uh, relig you, know, uh, you know, biblical scenes or allusions to biblical scenes. So you might have sometimes, you know, peasants dressed up reenacting certain scenes in kind of the contemporary costume that they, they had. But you could see, where are some of these other ones, right? So there's a, a this attempt at a kind of a realism, right? Was the, the main thing, right? This, um, I, I would say, kind of like a Hallmark card kind of look, right? This, it was a particular look to this. So here's another fellow, Hans Makart. And, you know, so we have these paintings, often big paintings of... Not only biblical scenes, but historical paintings of great wars and battles and military figures, etc. Right. So this is the kind of painting that was the main thing, you know, uh, that was going on at the time of Claude Monet. So let's now take a look at who Claude Monet is. Right. So born 1840, dies in 1926, lived a long life till the age of 86. And let's just sort of zip down here. 
a couple of things I just want to quickly point out. He was born in Paris, but kind of grew up in Le Havre, uh, which is um, kind of like a the, was like the shipping center of of France. You know where all of the big ships would come in, and you know it would be what would be an example. Uh, it would be. I'm trying to think, in Canada, it would be kind of like maybe, not even Vancouver, in, in England, it would be maybe Liverpool, right? A, like, a wor- like a real working class town, like the, the center of industry, right? In Ontario, it might be what used to be like Hamilton, Ontario, a steel manufacturing town on, on, the, on the side of, you know, a large body of water or the ocean, right? So he grew up there, wanted to be an artist for, at a fairly young age, his father was not really keen on that, but he insisted when um, the war broke. Well, he enlisted in the military. I think at that time, like, or was it? Or there was a, there was a lottery for enlistment in the military. He was drafted, and his father, he wasn't from a poor family, kind of a middle class family. His father offered to pay to kind of get him out of the, of military service if he would give up his dreams of being an artist so uh and and stop this whole silly thing of trying to make paintings all the time instead he declined and went and spent seven years in i think it was algeria or northern um africa as a soldier right so he already there that's a pretty big decision if you're gonna like I'm either going to go do military service and potentially get shot in like an active combat zone um, so that I could pursue art, right? Well, it tells you kind of how committed he was pretty early on there. Um, after, I think his aunt helped to get him out of military service at a certain period of time, realizing like this guy's not going to give up. It's not like he, you know, so I think there was some conversations within the family like, if something doesn't happen soon this guy's gonna get killed and what a shame it's gonna be for all of us right so you know stubborn um fathers can be right so um you can see some of these are some of his earlier paintings around this time uh 1860s a lot like his really good friend edouard manet um and then uh so let me see around this time he marries um Camille, his wife, they have a couple of children. Um, Jean Monet, let me see, I'll just quickly skip ahead. And she dies at the end of the 1870s. During that time where they're married, that he is quite productive. He makes the painting we're going to paint today. Um, When he dies, I just think this is kind of a, again, shows you how much of an artist he is. After his wife passes away, he, he has some comment where he's looking at her her dead body laying in the bed and if you a couple hundred years ago it wasn't uncommon for a dead relative to spend a few days in in the in home and people would mourn the body there so but he was looking at his dead wife and he writes about looking at the colors on her face and studying them and he sort of distances himself from the emotional impact of the, of his dead wife and think and studying her face to make a painting which he then makes this painting and then of course feeling a lot of guilt and he's like i it's but I, this is just I'm, I'm such an artist it's hard for me to kind of to separate anyway i just thought that was kind of an interesting story um after his wife dies he he becomes super productive and makes many of the most famous paintings that we know today uh, his style becomes more impressionistic let me just kind of quickly, you know, some of these paintings. He moves to uh, out st- northwest of Paris, this, this town called Giverny. I think it was a very, very small village at the time, in the middle of nowhere. And he builds this house and gardens. He's now starting to make more and more money selling his work. So he has this team of people building these Japanese gardens and, and water lilies. And um, so, like, this kind of image is the kind of paintings that maybe he's most famous for so when you hear of Claude Monet you might think of painting water lilies like this maybe not the painting we're going to make today but you'll see why I think it's so important or well I'm not the only one who thinks it's important 
So let's just quickly look at some Google images of these paintings. I've talked about the haystacks in a previous video where I talked about one of the things that Monet's famous for doing is painting the same picture over and over and over and over and over and over again at different times of day in the summer and fall and winter and spring when it's raining and when the sun is out when it's cloudy and blah blah I could go on and on um, because he was just so interested in in light and how light strikes different objects how it changes the atmosphere how it makes um, the, 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 some objects in the background seem further or closer away, depending on how the light strikes it. Um, here's just, this is the painting we're going to paint. Do I want to talk anything more about this before we jump into it? Actually, you know, this is kind of interesting. I, I want to just try this right now. One of the things just while researching this episode that I thought was interesting is they talk about this painting and how let's see, let's go to color how when we if we reduce the con the um the saturation that that sun disappears all right so this sun that is otherwise seems could be blazing in the sky if we take away all the saturation it disappears which mm -hmm is something you may not sort of anticipate or think think about when you look at it because it seems to be so much brighter than this kind of gray purple around it but it's really just a different color a different hue and not a different intensity of color okay so let's jump right into it we're going to start painting right off the bat i'm going to use a little bit of the the slow dry medium to do a little bit of blending got my palette let's just move our bob ross paintings out of the way our brushes and paints okay everything I want um, maybe just while I'm 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 thinking about this before I forget I want to just talk about a few things that you may want to consider getting for our next couple of classes so in our next class on Thursday we are going to be making a painting by one of Canada's greatest artists Jean-Paul Riopel who was, um, he's probably Quebec's greatest artist of all time, arguably. I, would, I mean, I, there's a few other people I could think of, but he would be the one globally that would be known more than any other. And for a lot of people, especially in the 50s and 60s, he was the giant of Canadian art. Um, Jean-Paul Riopel, and so and he made drip paintings very similar to Jackson Pollock, not the same, but there's, we'll talk about that, that. But one of the ways that we can make paintings like that without using like a big can of uh, of like household paint, like you'd paint your walls with, which you can use, is to use some material called pouring medium, right? So you can see they come in quite different sizes. This one, this big jug. I think is maybe 50 60 80 dollars i can't remember how much i paid for this big thing um and then obviously a much smaller one here but this we're gonna i'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff next class um and then maybe if you're at the art supply store and you're looking to spend even more money <laughs> one of the things that you may want to consider doing because we're in uh, next week, I think it is, we're going to make a painting based on Vermeer, Johannes Vermeer. Um, and he, so that's, we're going to paint the girl with a pearl earring. And we're going to do it in a little bit modified way that's going to make it easier for a beginner painter to make a painting of. And I'll show you all about how to do that. But one of the things you may want to consider getting is some uh, gloss or glazing liquid. 
and let me see if I can reach. I just re realized one other thing that would be helpful to have. Um, um I'm also going to use a photo transfer medium. And we're going to use this for Um, so photo transfer medium for transferring an image onto a canvas. You can use Mod Podge. I would say Mod Podge, but it's Mod Podge. You'll hear me say Mod Podge all the time. But uh, so here's just the matte version. Um, we're I'm, I may make a second painting later on in today's class, um, depending on how how time goes. I know people like to like, oh no, he's gonna make try to make two paintings in one class again. This is gonna be another one of those four-hour classes. No, no, uh, we're gonna do one. But if if I am ever thinking of wanting to do two or another painting while I've got wet paint, I always try to do the sanding at the, before I get started, so that. I'm not spreading all of this dust around the room while I've got pa wet paint everywhere because I don't want that powder to get into my paints. Okay, so we're going to do a landscape painting in this format. And let's just take a look at, at this painting again just so we can think about how we would create Um, oh, looks like some people are having an internet problem. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm sorry for it's jittering like that for people, but uh, yeah, it's pretty rainy outside, <laughs> so maybe there's the weather's causing some interruption. Anyway, I'm just going to keep on going. So... Um, to get this painting started, we want to put down some some colors in the background that are going to in kind of influence the colors on the foreground. Or we're gonna we're gonna layer a few different colors. So what's the the color underneath here? So let's just take a look at. Um, Irene says, "Can you list the things you asked us to get on the Facebook page?" Yes. I will. I'll, 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 I'll make a note of some of these extra mediums that were, I suggest you get so that if you want to get them. <clears throat> Good idea. Thank you, Irene. Um, so let's just take a quick zoom in to this painting. And if I'm, so I like to think of like an artist as being a bit of a detective, right? When there's a, a great um, exhibition I saw many years ago called I forget what it's called, but it was they, one of the essays was uh, the the artwork as crime scene, and it's like you the viewer's a bit of a detective who goes and tries to piece it back together what happened and who did what, when and where. So up here, I think we can start seeing some of this background color. So what it looks to me is like we have some reds and browns underneath all of this so that's what we're going to put in we're going to put some cool brownish red at the top and then we're going to work our way down to some warmer colors at the bottom so let's zoom out okay so let's put some colors on our palette I think we're going to need most of the colors except black. Black was not well. I yeah, let's avoid the black for today just because impressionism generally avoids the use of black. 
because black is such a strong dark color that it that it often kind of um, negates the the energy or life in in darker areas or shadows. And the impressionists are all about energy and life, and so. sure where the lid to that went. And lots and lots of white here. But I'm only going to put out what I'm going to use to get started because I don't want it to all seize up and dry. Okay, so I got my paint on here. I'm going to use... Maybe, you know, what I'm going to do, actually, I think, is I'm going to make two quick versions of the background. One, just using the paint, and then I'll do a second version using the slow dry medium, or the paint retarder. All right, just so you could see the difference. I kind of did this in the previous two Bob Ross episodes, but you kind of got to watch both of them. So I'm, I'm going to do them back to back, so you get maybe a clearer idea of how... Let's see if that helps with the bitrate on this here. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's start out with our cool red. I don't want to put this directly onto the canvas. This would be too intense, too bright. So let's scoop up a little bit of white. Now that's also going to be too bright, so I'm going to take some cool yellow. Let's make a bit of a, a peachy kind of color here. Let's take a lot more of it. Yeah, kind of like a peachy red. Okay. So I'm going to get that started. That's all whipped up and ready to go. And let's get another color on a di with a different brush warmed up for the foreground. So we'll use this warm red. I'm going to take some warm yellow. And I'm going to take a little bit of the warm blue. With some white in here. Okay. So we've got two different um, kind of peachy brown colors. One is cool and one is warm, right? They may not look too different or you probably, you're like, I don't know if I can tell that one's warm or cold at this stage. Um, how you would identify that one is kind of a little bit, I mean, I, now there's some blue in here, but it's just helpful if, that's why marking out these things on the, on the palette is really helpful to begin with. Okay, so we're going to do this. Um, wh one of the strategies, actually, let's let's go right into this. Let's just start painting here. Okay, so I'm going to goop up. I'm going to try to use lots of paint to do this, and I'm going to paint in here really quickly. So that's my cool paint. So this here, there's nothing but paint on my on my brush. I haven't put any mediums in here whatsoever. Okay. And just now start getting these colors closer together. Okay, 
Now that I've got this paint on the palette, I'm gonna start kind of going up and look at this paint is already starting to dry. It's right, so you got this is why you gotta be fast. If you don't have any um, paint medium to help slow down the drying process, then you've gotta be fast. All right, so I'm gonna take it and then slowly working my brush upwards. So now I'm picking up the paint up here, and then I'm gonna start working my way back down. All right, but we get these things where we get like these little streaks of paint that are kind of hard to blend out, right? Because the paint is now drying. And if I keep on doing this, you can see I start scraping some of this paint off of the canvas. All right, so it, it works. And we're gonna cover up the, the entire painting with other paint over top of this. So it doesn't, it's not gonna be super critical, but the, the blend is just not, you know, we can, well, let me see if I can try to kind of help it along a little bit by taking a little bit of paint up here and kind of doing this to kind of, but you can see it's, it's not gonna be much improvement. A little bit better, but. Okay, so there's th there's this painting, right? It's, it's it's okay, but I'm gonna put this one aside here, and we're gonna do one with the paint medium. Uh, poor choices. Just put in the comment. Is this acrylic? Yes, this is all acrylic. This is all acrylic painting class. So everything we're using here is with acrylic paint. So I'm gonna, let's do this again. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more paint. Whenever you're blending with acrylic paint, you wanna have as much, if possible, the paint ready before you kind of get started. Even if you're using the slow dry medium, the slow dry medium helps. It gives you an extra, depending on how much you put in, an extra, you know, maybe minute or two of, of blending that you wouldn't otherwise have. I wouldn't recommend putting too much in. You don't want it to be like, um, because otherwise you're, you're also gonna thin the paint out. So you'll see how much I put in here in a second. So I just mixed warm red and cool red in here. Let's just put a little bit more yellow in here. a tad of blue get that brown there again that's good and let's take a bit of this cool yellow add a little bit of white in here let's get the same thing just a little bit of white in there okay so we got that all mixed up now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my slow dry medium and uh, let me see, let's get a different view here. So, oh, I just got paint on my computer screen. Awesome, okay. Um, so you can see how much I'm actually gonna put in here. So it's gonna be a couple of drops. Right, so there was like three drops or so of the paint retarder or, or slow dry medium, exactly the same thing, All right? And then I'm just gonna get that in there and you see me squishing some of the paint out of the bristles. I've seen people kind of just dip their brush into a cup that has slow dry medium in there. That works as well. You'll see pretty quickly if you use this, how it works and how much you need to put in. Okay, so let's gonna do the exact same thing all over again. So we're gonna take our cool red and we're gonna put that up here. Like 
to get the edges done. Okay. And now let's take the warmer red from the bottom. Quickly get this in. Okay. So we got the paint on here. I'm just going to kind of even it out. You can already see it's a little bit less streaky. Right? And then I'm going to start joining these together. Allowing them to kind of mix on my brush. And I'm going to go down and then bring this paint up. What is that? Some gross blob of something. <laughs> All right. And so you got this little bit here. We'll just blend that right out. Right. If I want to try to get a little bit more of an even blend, I can go up here. Just want to try to. There was a little bit of a. See, this is all stuff that I could not do with. Reg with the acrylics without any mixture in there. Okay, so now I've got that. Then what I would do is take a really soft brush. What is my softest brush that I have here? Um, I have some nicer ones, but I'm just, let me see. I'm gonna use, well, you can use, like, a cheap brush from, like, Home Depot like this. You get them in a pack of, like, ten for five dollars or whatever. They're not ideal because they're pretty coarse, and they're certainly not made for this task. You could use something like um, a woman's, like, makeup brush for this. It's just to then take this and then gently kind of going over and doing a little bit of this blending. And you want to be doing, going, let's see, and I'm also going to, if I get paint on here, just rub a bit off. You also notice I'm not going up and down, right? Because then I'm, it's going to create all sorts of chaos. I'm just going across. I can even do a little bit of these strokes. You can see it's... Um, this is not even the softest brush. This is also just a nice, cheap little brush. I think I got this in a, a paint set as well. Um, and just go and soften up these edges. Right? So we have... And doing that is, is a much... Not only is the effect, I think, better... So let's see if how I can show these two side by side. Um, so let's put this here versus that. All right. A little dark here because right so you can see this one there's that edge is pretty rough right through the middle it was pretty hard for me to get rid of it here there's still a little bit of edge I could have really burnished that and made it a little bit smoother but the results I think are pretty clearly you know this one is is superior right okay oops again I got paint on this iPad Okay, so let's go back to this here. We'll move this one. Um, 
Actually, you know, I just realized that I didn't bring my hair dryer down here. So let me just send a quick message to my wife up there. I think she's still home. Amy? 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 Oh, oh thank you. Here she is. So, um, one of the things, this, the one that I used just the paint on is almost entirely dry. Thank you so much. Versus the one that I use the slow dry medium on is going to take another probably 10 minutes for it to be completely dry. So. But if you got a hair dryer, you can speed up that process dramatically, right? So the the first one I did with just the acrylic, that's dry. That dried was almost dry by the time I started putting the hair dryer on it, and now it's it's bone dried, totally ready to paint on. The one where I put the slow dry medium or paint retarder in it is I'd say 90% dry. Even with the hair dryer, it still feels a little bit tacky. So, but just fine. By the time I'm ready to paint on it, it will be dry. But again, if I didn't have it, I it would take. I would have to kind of wait here for another ten minutes. Wait for it to slowly dry, 
before I did any, assuming that, that that's what I want to do is, is, I mean, I could just paint right over top of it if I wanted some of this red to blend into the color, which in this case, I don't really want to happen because we're going to be putting layers of paint on here. Um, just see in the comments. Jean says, does the slow dry medium affect your brushes? Um, I can't, uh, I don't, I, I can't really think of how it would. I think, I mean, like here, one of the great things is these brushes have been sitting here with paint for a couple of extra minutes and they're totally fine. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess you mean, does it, will it ruin the brushes maybe, or, uh, I, I, I don't think so. If anything, it, it might help preserve them, especially if you're a bit of a, a wild painter who's not in the habit of cleaning up as you go, right? Which again, cleaning up as you go is kind of a, a requirement for acrylic painting, right? If you're, unless you've got hundreds of brushes on the go and you can put them in water, but even then, one of the things with um, acrylic brushes, or well, any brushes, if they're sitting down in a pot like this for any length of time, especially smaller brushes, larger ones, less so of a problem, but smaller ones, if they're in a cup and they're just sitting there for for hours, right, they're, they're, you're going to find when you, when you take them out that they've kind of bent and they've lost their shape. So that's why during these classes you see me cleaning my brushes quite frequently is because I don't want the brush to, 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 what would you call that? Almost like, um, a flower kind of, uh, blooming, right? They, they just kind of go outward or they take these weird kind of shapes. And usually once they've lost their shape, that it's pretty hard to get that paint to return back to, you know, I've, I've spent time, even nice brushes, especially, actually, I think nice brushes can be, and that's the most kind of heartbreaking thing is when you do spend, you know, $50 on a really, really nice brush that is, that could, if you took care of it, you could pass it down to your grandchildren, right? Because it's, it's made of such high quality, but if you're not taking care of it, then it's, it's going to be as useless as a, a $1 brush, right? That's got paint caked into it okay so we've got two paintings oh uh, does the dry medium wash out of the brush oh yeah absolutely yeah the 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 slow dry medium washes right out of the brushes it's water soluble you don't need any special material to clean the brush in any way it's um it's also acrylic right and acrylic is basically plastic so you always kind of think in the back of your mind, when it hardens, it turns into a flexible plastic. Okay. So which one should we use here? Maybe let's use the, the one that's got a little bit of a smoother gradation here. Again, we're going to put like a horizon almost right through the middle. So having this nice blend does it going to make much of a difference no not really but i just thought for this particular exercise it might be helpful um to uh just do that quick little demo off on the side here okay so let's go back to our image and just sort of look at what the next step is going to be now i definitely went a little bit wild on the red right i i want this painting to be kind of a bright bright painting we are going to start now putting some gray layers over top of it which is going to reduce the saturation of this red quite dramatically depending on how much gray you put on here so it's up to you um how you know i could see some people maybe making this painting much less intense and adding a lot more not just white, but a little bit of black in there to make it a gray. And so that this background could be already somewhat desaturated. But um, this, it's for 2021. This painting was made 100 and 
I guess almost 150 years ago. Um, so I want it to be a little bit, bit more bright and pop with the times. Okay, so this color, the next color that I'm going to make is going to be up in the sky here. We're going to make a, a bluish purpley you know, actually, it'll probably be mostly blue because it's going to interact with this red and it'll turn it purpley anyway. So let's, um, we're going to mix a cool blue, cool gray blue. So, um, and you know what? I said I wasn't going to use black, but to, in order to get gray, we're going to need a little bit of black. And so let's mix some, uh, all this white has got a lot of red in it. I don't want any red. So let's see, put that there. Let's mix a gray. You can go and buy gray from an art supply store. If you're, if you're really getting into still life painting or landscape painting, then having some gray might not be a bad idea at all. Right, because then you're not doing this mixing all the time. You're going to start out with a little bit more of a consistent color. Okay, so I got this gray. Let's add a little bit of blue in here. Okay. Now there's two options for this next part. You could add some more uh, of the slow dry medium into this. You could add water into this, or you could use some glazing uh, medium, which I talked about earlier on and wherever I put that. <laughs> um, where did that go? That's odd. Oh, here. Um, so, but I'm not gonna use either the I'm not going to use the, the glazing medium because we're going to use that in a, a future episode. So I'm not even going to bother kind of introducing a whole nother medium into this. We've done some of the very light dry washes over top of paintings like when we did the Renoir. Um, what's another painting where we did that a lot of? Let me see just as a quick detour. Um, we did a little bit of this when we did the Thomas Kincaid. We did that as well. And we did a, a bunch of it in the Chagall painting for sure. And the Betty Goodwin. So we've done that technique a number of times where we just add a little bit of... So we can do that with this here. Maybe just as... Um, I'll show you... Let's... Uh, we'll do this. I'll do one with the, the water and I'll do one with the the slow dry medium, just so you can see the difference between these different things. Where did my little eyedropper go? There we go. By the way, this poor plant I've got over here, this is, maybe it looks okay on camera, but you see, oh my, it's really dying. <laughs> I do not have a, a green thumb. I've got red fingers and blue thumbs, but not a green thumb. Okay, so I'm going to add some water to this gray to thin it out so that I can... Um, so I put like maybe five or six drops in there. All right, so this... Now I've got this gray. And that water's going to thin it out so that I can do more... Maybe I'll even put a little bit more water in here. So that I can do kind of like light washes over top of this surface. Okay, let's get the painting up on the screen so that we can see both of these side by side. So I'm going to take this and sort of going in these horizontal or diagonal, sorry movements across the canvas.
coming back into here. So you can see the how blended or not that bottom or, or this background is is not such so critical after all, right? If you're really worried about that. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. We're gonna. I know you were wondering, are we gonna paint these buildings or the boats and smokestacks and stuff in there? Yeah, we're gonna get to that in a second. So I'm just gonna swap these out and we'll just do this again, but I'm gonna add in some of the slow dry medium. Now there is a little bit of water in here already. But you see there's a nice big blop in there. Let's just give this a good stir. Mix it in well. So add a little bit more blue in there. Okay. Let me do the same thing. Okay, and then once you've got that on here, I can then just take my brush and kind of soften it up a little bit. This is something that I can't really do very well with the, the acrylic paint just on its own. All right, without the slow dry medium, it's pretty hard to do that. So I can add a little bit more down here. So you can see, like, if there's parts where I, it's kind of really built up, just take th this brush, and I can just shift it around a little bit. And scrub it out a bit. And so this is a lot closer to how, like, um, a, a oil paints work. Right? So you can still blend, but it's not quite as dry of a technique. And it's a little bit more forgiving because we have a little bit more time so that you don't quite feel like, oh, I'm gonna work so fast. Like, oh, right? You can be a little bit slower on the application of paint, right? So we can just see the difference between, here's the first one. And once I've got these kind of thicker layers of paint, they're kind of just like locked in, right? It's not much movement I can do unless I get my brush a little bit wet. But if I get my brush a little bit wet and start trying to smudge that around, the danger is I could be lifting up some of the red underneath as well and kind of scrubbing it off. Okay. So the reason why I put this down first, let's go back to this one, is, is I want a little bit of atmosphere further behind. We're gonna put some buildings, or I think it, because it's like a harbor. So I think what we're seeing in this painting is like uh, kind of the, the other side of the harbor. I think there's a big boat right here. And then there's another, maybe a, a boat with a crane or a bridge or, you know, we don't, we're not exactly sure what's going on there because it's a little bit darker, right? So that color is, it looks like a, a, a green and we're going to put a, a cool green in the background and then we're going to put some warmer green in the foreground. Irene says, I'm a slow brush cleaner, but I was lucky in that I got a bucket for my mom that you can hold the brushes in so they sit in water and don't sit on the bottom. So nice. Um, so that's actually interesting. I do have, um, I'm not sure if I don't see it. 
I have a um, where now oh, I'm curious. I do have a jar that, that um, you can put your brushes in, and it's got like a metal coil inside, and that's really good for particularly for oil painting, where you can kind of put your brush in there and you can rub it against those coils, and it helps get the pigment right off of the brush. Um, and you can also kind of jam the brushes in so that they kind of sit in between those coils rather than sitting at the very bottom of the jar and getting bent. But yeah, there is, uh, I think I've also seen some of those where it's like a, like there's rubber holes on there. You put your brush through and it kind of suspends the brush so that the, 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 the hairs aren't, again, on the bottom of the canvas or the, the water bottle or the, the water jar or whatever, your cleaning cup or box or... Okay, um, so let's mix this <laughs> red or green. Um, let's get that one. Two. So I want a cool green. So I'm just going to move this out of the way so you can see me mixing a few colors here. So I'm just going to move this over. And we've still got some of the, that blue. Okay. So I'm going to make a cool green that is uh, a little bit on the darker side, maybe even a little bit of gray in there as well, right? So we start out with this color, and that's a nice, beautiful, super saturated green. But if we put this in this painting right now, it's going to turn this painting into a cartoon, right? It's going to look like something off of The Simpsons, right? So we don't want that. We want something that's going to be less intense. So if I didn't want to use um, the uh, black, I could use a little bit of the warm blue. And that's going to start cutting some of the intensity of that color down. See how just adding little bits of it, not quite as intense. Let's just keep going here. Right now it's, it's still a cool green. It's warmed up a bit, but it's also desaturated. So it's it's lost some of its luminescence or luminance. All right, so that's much better. Um, I mean, let's add a little bit of white in here as well. There we go. So this is going to work really nicely for our You know what, I'm going to add, this This would work, well, you know, let's put, add more white in here because it should be further away in the distance. And the more white we put in here, as well as some of the these blues, are going to push it further backwards. I'm just going to get a little more blue here to darken that. Okay, so let's start painting this. Oops, what happened there? Yeah, okay. So Oh, <laughs> you guys are talking about the plant Stanley. Okay, so let's start putting in this green. Now, again, we're talking about impressionism, right? And impressionism is not about making things look exactly the way that they are. It's about giving us an impression, a kind of a fleeting glimpse of what is there. All right, so we can build up some of these surfaces. We can 
let them get a little bit dry. So as the paint starts to run off my brush, I can just, I'm not using any mediums in this, it's just the paint as it is. I kind of blend it out a little bit. I can even take this a bit into the sky. Right in here is going to be where that sun is. So he's probably at this point, he's painting like clouds and kind of like really heavy kind of shapes in the in the background. Right. Okay, maybe. Before I do, I'm just going to do this on this one here. So just halfway around. So this is why I don't think you really need to draw this out ahead of time. All right, you can kind of put that horizon line wherever you want in the middle here. Okay, so you see I'm kind of applying it kind of very brushily, right? I'm not worried about, you know, making anything look too pretty here. So next I'm going to take a smaller brush and let's just, like I think this is a boat in here. Maybe there's like a, you know, like this is probably one of those a, a boat with, you know, big masts. I think in behind there's some like smokestacks. Right, and you also want to think about the reflection in the water. So if you're doing that, you might want to just take your brush and soften up any of the you can soften these things up a little bit. But especially when you get into the water, just kind of softening them up a little bit. This thing is over here again. I just think it's like some sort of crane. You know, if you I live here in Vancouver and you go down to the harbor and you see those giant container ships offloading things from all over the world and you know, those huge cranes. Okay, next I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to start adding some of these little dashes and lines he's got here for the water. And I'm going to cover a lot of this again with paint. So we're going to do a couple of layers. Alright, so... Maybe I'll do this one. I already started this one. I'm just going to, again, while we're still using, I'll use a little bit more of the slow dry medium in here. Just so you can see how that uh, affects things. So I'll just take that, 
blend this in. And then let's just scrape some of that off. And then I can take it, do the same thing. We'll put these. So this, if I do want to do any kind of blending out of this with the slow dry medium, see how it blends a lot easier, almost too much, right? So that's why you don't want to just fill it with too much slow dry medium, because if you really want to be able to see, I'm not even going over all of the lines, but it really wants to spread. Slow dry medium works you know, also really well for getting this kind of watery look, right? You can see how it kind of creates that movement in the water. Right, if I want to just take a bit of the edge off of this, I can. So see how just so much more like effortless it is to paint with this medium. Okay. And similarly, let's say we go up into the sky. And we've got some lines that are, let's say, really rigid like that. You're like, oh no, it's too much. It's got the slow dry medium in there, so it's really easy to kind of spread it out. And you're like, ah, problem no more, right? Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm rather than mixing any new paint, I'm just going to take this, I'm just going to add a lot more of my warm blue into this mixture here. Let me get some of the yellow, cool yellow in here. much darker now and there's a bit of that slow dry medium in there right now I could add a little bit more let's say we'll go back to this painting oh I forgot to put some of those dashes in there that's all right uh, and let's now paint some of these this boat that's in the foreground here Oops. let's get this back up So it's a little bit off center. We've got somebody standing in their boat. All right, and then there's this reflection in the water. And again, I can take my brush and just Try to soften the water a little bit, this reflection. All right, and then there's this other boat over here. Now, I could mix a little bit more white into this, but I think what I'm going to do instead is just go over top of it with a gray wash. 
afterwards. Alright, we got another boat, I think, back here. So right now, these boats are pretty dark. They're really sitting on the very front of the painting, so... But I'm gonna... I can just... I can blend anything and push anything further back that I want at any time. Right? It's like, oops, I made too big of a splotch. Oh, it doesn't even exist anymore. Just It's like an eraser, right? this one here. We'll add those same touches to it. Just smooth it out a little bit. You can do this without the the slow dry medium. If you're really fast on it and you got like a brush in both hands like this or in the other free hand. If you're quick on it, you can blend it out really quickly. This right here is uh, Baby Yoda from the Mandalorian. I don't know if anyone's watching that. So that's what this little shape reminds me of over here. So I'll just build it up. And I think, you know, at different times, as we go, we may want to add some more of these darker spots over top of it. I think Monet, as he's painting, he's, he's, I'm sure he's probably painting the painting very similar to what we're doing right now. Obviously, he's painting on location. I think he was painting out of the window of a hotel, a hotel maybe? Um, when he, because he painted, he, this is, so he grew up in Lahab. And then came back many years later and painted this again, or, or, or went to his kind of like hometown and made this uh, along with a few other sketches. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting some more gray, more and more gray over top of that. We can add different colors into that gray, make it more blue. Make it more purple, you know, whatever your fancy. So let's, I'm gonna use the blow dryer. Because if we're gonna put some thin washes over top of this, we want this to be really dry. If this is still wet and I start putting other colors over it, especially thin colors which may have white in it, particularly, and trying to blend it, I run the risk of this so starting to smudge. Well, not even just smudging. But, you know, kind of scraping that paint off. So I want this to be, pure, like, bone dry.
Okay, so the question I just saw in the chat there is what is the difference between using um, so first of all there's GAC 500 is very similar to um, glazing liquid this uh, GAC 500 is sort of like um, uh, if you're if you really like adding water to your paintings or to your acrylic because you like that feeling of being able to paint very you know uh, fluidly right GAC 500 would be what you'd want to use for that it, it's like adding water to it but a much better alternative to water because water also you know you use water to clean your brushes when you're painting with acrylic right so it's water is not ideal because it's it's literally breaking down the paint and making it less stickable if that's a word to the canvas whereas GAC 500 would be the proper additive to use if you really like adding water to your painting you would notice I barely use any water at all when I've been painting up through this entire course I have very rarely used any any water so that would be one option you could use it's similar to a glazing look I think it even says on here yeah useful for creating glazes right okay so a glazing liquid the question that Laurie asked what is the difference between glazing liquid and the paint retarder or the slow dry medium is that the glazing liquid it does keep the paint open or or it prevents it from drying a, a little bit slow it slows down the drying time a little bit um, but it, it what it does is it really thins the paint out it makes it more transparent right so we're gonna use the 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 glazing liquid when we do the Vermeer or if you want to paint like Leonardo da Vinci it's great it's a it's it's also super forgiving because you can make these super super thin layers of paint and you could build it up over and over and over again and barely see and it creates a really nice blend right so this would also be really great if you want if you've already got a color let's say you've painted the painting all red and you want to create a blend of blue over top of it after the red has dried right you could put so you could have some blue on your brush mix in some glazing liquid and then paint the blue on one side and just slowly blend it out across and it'll look like you've blended those two colors together right that's kind of what a glaze is for right or again if you're painting like the Mona Lisa and you want to get that look of you can't see the brush strokes at all it just looks super smooth that's what a glaze is for uh, the the slow dry medium you can use in a very similar way to a glaze it's just that it, it it's really slows its its main purpose is to slow down the drying time and the more you add the the, the slower that it's gonna take for it to dry so if you add and you're not you shouldn't use any more than 50% of this to paint right so you don't want to have you know if, if you've got a glob of paint you don't want to put a um, the same amount of this thing because you're like oh I want to be able to paint and leave this painting for two hours while I go pick up my kids from soccer practice right that would be a bad use of this right you don't want to keep the slow dry medium on it so that it stays open for hours and hours because then it's 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 it, it runs the possibility of not drying properly at all and always being really tacky and then dust sticking to it um, as it because it may not even really ever properly dry it'll always have this tacky kind of quality to it um, so you and if you tried to add a lot of the glazing liquid to a um, to a color it's just gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and it'll dry slower but it's also gonna be really transparent whereas the the slow dry medium or retarder it's not going to really make the paint too much more transparent so if that kind of helps make the distinction between all those different kinds of mediums I know it's a little bit confusing um, what different mediums do that's why I haven't mentioned any of this until you know we're you know 35 episodes in because if I started talking about this on our second episode when we're still trying to figure out how to mix color people would just be like oh my goodness this is just 
too confusing. Like, pff, this paint thing is way over my head. I'll never be able to do it, right? So that's what I'm kind of saving it towards the, the end here so that it's not so overwhelming for people. Okay, so now, you know, what we can do is we're going to put some um, thin layers over top of it. You could do this as a glaze. That, would, that could be one use if you wanted to try using your glaze medium to, to do this next step. That, that would work. In, in this instance, it would it, you could use both the slow dry um, or the, the glazing material in your paint for this next step. I mean, essentially, all of these materials are like chemicals, right? You start, you're mixing a little bit of different kinds of chemicals to get different results. It's a little bit like cooking even, right? What's the difference between cumin and turmeric and, you know, like, or cinnamon and thyme, you know, like, all those are going to add, have, they're all spices and they may have very similar properties each have their own specific kind of taste and sometimes you if you don't have one you can kind of take two or three and simulate that flavor a little bit but it's not quite exactly the same okay so um just move some of these off to the side here so what do we want to do next we're going to put a a wash over top this is all nice and dry so Let's, um, got a brush. Now I am going to let's stay up here in the sky. And I'm going to add this cool blue into the gray. And on this painting, I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to do kind of like that dry brush technique, right? And then the, the, the other version of this painting, I'm going to use the slow dry medium, just so you can see the two different processes at work. So I'm just rubbing some of this paint off of my brush. And then I'm just going to take this and start kind of smearing it a little bit into the sky. And if you start rubbing out some of the image in behind, don't worry about it, right? First of all, a couple of things are going to happen. This is, as it dries, some of that stuff in the background is going to come back through and we'll see it again as it dries. And then we can also always go back over top of it later on and, and repaint some of it so it becomes more visible. So that's working pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that so far. I think for down here, I want a little bit more um, of the warm. I'm going to take a little bit of warm yellow and warm blue. A lot of warm yellow. So I gotta just get a bit of a greenish quality going on. All right. So I'm going to take this warm yellow.
There we go, getting more of that blue there. Okay, I'm just gonna roll as much off my brush because I'm just gonna want the same dry brush technique here. So I'm just gonna, actually let's rub some of this off here. So this is why you want everything to be nice and dry so that I'm not scraping any paint off or blending any of these other previous layers in. Right, you can even take some of this paint that I previously wiped off, put that in here, and I'm also going to take this same color and just bring it up into the sky a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to do the same, I'm going to take some of this previous kind of cooler uh, blue and gray that I had mixed before the sky. I'm just going to bring this down here a little bit as well. So we'll just get a bit of this atmosphere. Okay, you're probably like, whoa, this is getting pretty dark, Michael. Okay, it's okay. Let's take a little bit of white. Put that on my brush. All right, and we're just gonna now take some of this white. Oh, that's pretty intense, but I'm gonna move it around. So this is just the paint without any additive in it whatsoever. All right, so you can see there's certain areas in here where the paint built up and there's nothing I can do about it. It's kind of I'm stuck with it. But it's not like I'm all is lost because then I can now, I've got this here. I'm gonna go back, grab my, this darker color and we'll just go back over top. And it's like we're pulling this figure, this boat, out of the mist. Alright, and we can kind of soften this up a little bit if we're quick on, on it.
Okay. And then, you know, again, if you feel like this is a little bit too, there's too much white in there, what I would do before I do anything else, again, is just... So what is missing in this painting? Well, the sun for the sunrise. We need to get that in here. So let's get that sun in. Okay. We're gonna put. We're gonna mix a uh, a warm orange. And we'll put that. It's pretty similar to the orange that we used right off the top. Let me see. I need some more red. Warm red. So I can take this warm yellow and warm red. Let's mix it together. Now I could put this right on there, but it is going to be really, really, really bright and a little cartoony. So again, I'm going to add a little bit of white to it just to take down the intensity of that color a bit. Let's add a little more yellow in there. And where should we put it? We'll put it in the painting. If, if this is the middle, it looks like it's a, just a little bit off to the side here. So we may need to add a few layers on here. So we'll just wait for that to dry. But as we go, we can now I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush. And we're going to put this re reflection into the water here. You can see how it's sort of spreading out a little bit as we go. In fact, it looks like he's also taking some of that warm yellow and spreading it out a little bit. So I'm just very delicately putting some of this just warm yellow right out of the tube. Because, you know, as light moves through this kind of cloud mist in the horizon, it's getting diffused. And it, so it's, it's not just a straight bolt of light. It's coming through, bouncing off all of this and moving around. So...
right, so slowly, like, life coming back into the picture here. I'm going to put some of that s the same kind of color very delicately up here into the sky as well. So you can see I'm just putting it in and then just rubbing it out really quickly. I could be just using a paintbrush just to s do some of that smoothing. Again, it's that light that's coming through the clouds up here. So after I'm done this, and I'll be done this very shortly, I'm going to finish the other painting, which I've been using mostly uh, the uh, slow dry medium in there. And you'll just see how I can use that medium to finish that painting. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit more paint on top of here. It might take two or three layers of paint before you get this sun just the way you want it. I, I would encourage you to avoid adding too much white in there that would be sort of like if you're really um, impatient you might add a lot of of uh, white into it and it's gonna be too intense remember we looked I, I took the saturation down and it almost disappeared into the sky we kind of want that where it's a bit of a subtle effect. I notice another little trick that um, Monet uses. He puts a little bit of dark, he really darkens this one in a few places. So let's just use, do what he did too. So not only light, not, we're just adding another layer on top of here. We're going to darken this again. And then I'm just going to get even darker. Okay, so there's this one. I think that's pretty good. I mean, I, we get, I think we understand the basic principles at play here. So I'm going to do this again, but we're going to use the slow dry medium. You'll just see how that changes things. Okay, so I'm just going to clean up a few brushes here. Maybe I'll just leave down for you to see while I clean up after myself a bit here. Okay. 
So, you know, I can see these streaks of, of yellow that I put in there are a little intense. I may even knock that down just a little bit. Um, as Because I'm going to mix that same color again for the sky. So, maybe I'll just do that real quick. Um, so, how did we do that? What we did is we, we took... So we need some more white. I'm gonna mix a gray again. Take some white. I can even just mix in over top of all this. Was a little too much blue. Spread that out, and let's get a lot more white in there. Okay, so right now this paint is quite thin. There's I haven't mixed a lot of paint on there. It's pretty thin. It's gray. Maybe I'll just, just, just try to add a little more white in here. There we go. Ah, Michael, you keep adding too much blue in there. Some more. more white. So when this kind of thing happens, if I'm mixing, I'm not just going to keep adding more and more white to it, because it'll take me, like, mountains of it. I'm actually going to mix it elsewhere. So I'm going to just mix it right up here. Okay. So it's, it's totally different shade much lighter and then let's take our slow dry medium and this actually well, I was gonna say I was gonna fix this before I moved on right so let's just fix that just on its own before I add any slow dry medium just scraping as much paint off of my brush as possible it's quite wet it is for I'm just going to gently, oops, that's pretty intense. So, we'll just, ah, you see this is, you go too much, you get too excited. I'm going to put a little bit of this here while I'm working on this. So this rag is a little bit wet, so I'm just going to use that to help smudge this in. So right now it's almost like I'm cleaning the paint off, right? Well, this paint is kind of coming off. Okay. Uh, it's negligible to how it, if I improved that at all. So let's do this um, now with this material, the slow dry medium. So I'm gonna put there's quite a lot on there actually. Maybe I don't think I need quite so much. But if I do want to do any blending into it, this will be kind of open for the next like five, ten minutes or so. Okay. So before I even start applying here, I want to make sure I've got some brushes that I can use to to fan or blend this out here. So I'm gonna I have. Uh, this I've got this one. Got a few of these little trusted. Let's move these up here. Things to kind of blend that paint out. Okay, let's take a look at this, and let's just dive right in here. Okay, and now let's. Integrate that a bit more. Thank you. 
just going to come down here with it and add a little bit of this into the foreground. So you see, like, these little f marks that really caused me quite a headache previously. I can, I can kind of take care of them a little bit easier here. Okay. Okay, next I'm going to make, I had this, this green that I mixed previously, right, which was my warm blue, I think I need a little more of that. Again, I'm going to add, um, actually, you know what, before I do anything, I'm going to dry this down a bit. So I just wanted to dry, because this is the paint that's got the slow dry medium in it. And I didn't want to then put more paint over top of it. And because if this is still wet, then I could, these colors could be mixing, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it could also be trying to scrape some of that paint off, which, you know, if you've probably had that happen a few times and it's super frustrating, right? Okay. So, and put the slow dry medium on there. So I'm giving, well, it's more than enough, plenty. So again, the difference between the slow dry medium and the glazing liquid, I put the glazing liquid in here. This is gonna become semi-transparent. I put the paint retarder in there and it's, you know, a little bit more transparent but it, the main feature is it's going to take much longer to dry. So in a way, we're using the slow dry medium to to do um, a glaze. This is kind of a glaze that we're doing right here anyway. I'm just going to take some of this excess paint off and brush this around. Thank you. 
So I don't even really have to use my blending brush much at all. It, uh... Because especially if this brush is kind of get a bit of a, a... Starting to dry out a bit, or there's less paint on it, it kind of blends on its own quite easily. I'm just going to take a little bit of this color and bring it up into the sky. Okay. All right, so now it's kind of darkened down a bit. That's okay. While we're here, I'm going to add a little bit of this. Oops, that's the cool yellow. I don't want that in there. So oops. Clean my brush. I want warm yellow in the foreground. Get a little more warm yellow on the brush. Okay, so I've got my warm yellow. Let's put a little bit of the slow dry medium on there. I'm just going to blend this together a bit. Get a bit of this previous color I have here. Okay, and then I'm going to take this, actually, just take a little bit of it off my brush, and then let's put some down here. Like, what's interesting is, because... Every, there's so much kind of there is this picture is so muted that this color actually is so bright it, it kind of looks a little bit like a um, a cool yellow so I'm just gently rubbing this into the foreground here and because I've got the slow dry medium I can kind of blend it out if I feel it's too heavy in certain places and let's bring a bit of it up into the sky just as we did the previous painting or the other version and then likewise I can scrub a bit out if I feel it's too intense all right let's say I kind of want a bit more orangey quality. So let's say I take some warm red and this warm yellow. Let's get more of an orange in that sky. There's a lot of paint on this brush, so I'll just kind of rub a bit of it off. And I'm going to put some of that up here. And then I can, it's got a bit of that slow dry medium still in it, so I can blend that back out. So I'm definitely killing this brush using it in this way. Let's just I'm gonna let it sit in some water for a few minutes. Now I feel like I've 
added too much here, so let's going to... Gonna put a little bit of white back into this area here. Just very lightly scrubbing over that surface. So I'm pretty close to finishing both of these paintings off. Just brush some paint in here. Okay, so you can see if this feels like a little bit more softer transitions between all of this. feels more convincing as kind of a fog to me anyway. Uh, what's left to do is some of the, the details. We're going to bring some of um, uh, this back up here. So that was this blue, cool blue, cool yellow to make this green. And we added some dark blue. We added a touch of black in there. Nice and dark, and then a little bit of white, so it's not too intensely dark. It still feels a little bit too candy. Colored. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more white into here just to, oops, that's a lot, Let's soften it up a bit, and then we'll get this boat back here, Baby Yoda. Okay, and then we'll just put in all of these little kind of waves, I guess. I 
if I want to darken it back up, I just scrub back some of the other paint. And I just oops, it needs to be darker than that. Okay, and then all we got to do is finish off the the sun. So we have a little bit of that mixed previously. That was my warm red, warm yellow. And that goes somewhere right up here. So I want this reflection to kind of coming down the side of the boat. Okay. that dry for a second. We'll just come back and look at this one and see does it need any more paint on there. That one feels pretty good. Let me see. Let's just blow during that. Just want to make sure that that was nice and dry before I started trying to paint more on top of it so that rather than so I wouldn't be scrubbing paint off I'd be actually just adding paint onto the top surface here. So I'm just trying to look at it, see what else I need to do. I'm going to add a little bit of that little darker line under in there.
if I want to do much more on that. You know, let me just, uh, I think we might be done. So, I'm just going to move a few of these brushes out of the way. We'll clean up a little bit, and then we'll take a look at these side by side. Will you be able to know the difference between the one that I used the... Do you even remember at this point which one has the... Um, slow drying medium and which one was done without any at all? That's the question. And which one do you prefer, maybe even most importantly? So this is, let's say this is A and B. Which one do you like better than the other? Can you remember which one I was doing here? I think I'm just going to add a little bit more red to that. Gene says prefers A over B. <laughs> Laurie likes them both. So I think a little, what I have a little bit, there's more blue in this area of the sky. I could put a little more blue into here. Um, this one's got a little bit more orangey kind of colors. So that, where is the that up. Donna likes A, if A is on the left. <laughs> Anna likes A better. So I'm not putting any white into this. I'm just adding kind of Painting over the same thing over and over and over again. And that's really important. It does make me think about maybe adding a little bit more blue up into the sky here. Let's take a look at his. Interesting. It's not actually as much blue. I put way more in mine, but I kind of like the way that looks, eh? So I think I am going to, regardless of what the original looks like, I'm going to, and everyone's saying they like A better, and maybe that's why. So let's just, uh, I'm going to take an extra second. I know I said I was just about done, but how many times have you heard me say that, right? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit of this cool blue. Just move that out of the way for a second. Let's move, keep that there, but we'll move the painting out of the way. Um, so I'm going to take just a little bit of cool blue that I got left on here and some white. This is pretty dry right now. It's you know the last little bits on my painting. I'm gonna squirt a bunch of the slow dryer on there. So now magically that paint comes alive again. Let's add some more white in here. I just want always want to be careful, like, you know, sometimes you, you might think to yourself, wow, I want to make this much more white and then you just or much more blue and you go make it really blue and it's too much. Let's put a little bit more of this in here. 
one more tiny little drop. You don't need a lot of this stuff. Okay. So let's move that out of the way. And I'll get set up. You know what? I should have washed my this brush first. It's still going to be a little bit too wet. So I have another. I can try using this um, cheap brush from Home Depot. We'll see. We'll just do it. It's like, whoa, that's intense. All right, we'll scrub it away. Hmm. Not sure. I think that might not have been the smartest idea, but this will also go a little more transparent once it dries, so. So you see I painted around that sun, blended a bunch of it away, and then I can go right over top of it just to get kind of close. And then I'm obviously I'm going to go back over there with some more red here in a moment. Kind of like what I'm doing is introducing a lot more atmosphere into the picture. So much so that some of the stuff in the background is getting lost. I'm, I'm anticipating that some of that's going to come back as it dries. Okay. Just mixing the sun color again real quick. And I don't need to go right out to the very, very edges of this because it actually kind of will work even nicer kind of this center being like white hot. <laughs> I 
There's a lot of mist in this one now. Okay, so that changed, I mean, a lot of the stuff got obliterated as I did that. Now, the question that I would be faced with is, is that okay? Right, I've already got one painting that I'm pretty happy with. Right, I kind of feel like I want to do the same thing with the sky, but I've got one here that's a little bit different. And that's personally why I like, let's see these things side by side. This is why I love making two paintings at the same time. Because isn't it great to have, this is the great problem to have is which painting do I like more? Right, this again was A, A on the left and B on the right. You know, which one is better? I don't know. They're both, they both kind of, I'm, I'm happy with both of them. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think we could mince hairs for a long time. I think it's time to sign these and call it a day. So, my name. January 2021. Can you believe it? Claude Monet's first name is actually Oscar. That's your trivia question or answer his earliest paintings are signed Oscar or O. Monet um, so let's see this one was A a second time when I was in junior high school one of my best friends he was the best man at my wedding 30 years later um, we used to draw comic books and um, we were so focused on making comic books that I would be writing them and inking them, and my good friend Jesse was uh, drawing them with pencil. And we were so into this that during exams, one of us would do the exam and then give the other person the answers so the other person could work on the comic book literally during exam time. And the funniest episode out of all of that was during one exam, my buddy Jesse not only copied all of my answers down, 
but wrote my name on the top of his <laughs> his exam at which uh you know the the teacher you know an hour later he's grading the assignment you know the tests and he's like michael uh why are there two why did you you hand in two uh, copies of the test right and then we're both jesse and i like oh <gasps> Oh no! So Jesse goes up to the front. And is like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I wrote down uh, Michael's name on there." And of course, the teacher is like, "You moron! Like, who writes down somebody else's name on the test?" Obviously, we didn't want to explain to him. Oh, the reason why is because we're so focused on <laughs> on our comic book that he was copying my answer. So we just kind of had to chalk chalk it up to him being not quite as bright <laughs> but um anyway i always think that's like one of the funniest stories about uh my youth at, um of just i mean not quite like claude monet and being so dedicated to making art that he was willing to stay in the military for seven years despite his father um but uh nevertheless shows a little bit of our dedication towards making art uh <laughs> at a young age. Okay, so that was another fun class, you guys. Uh, just as a quick reminder for uh, next or next next class here, let's create a little space for ourselves. Is I'm going to suggest you get some of this pouring medium. You don't have to get it if you don't want if you want to just sort of watch there there are ways we could do this without any additive at all so if you want you can just do that but a pouring medium and and virtually like golden liquid tex pbo um uh any any brand makes pouring medium because m a lot of people use these mediums for literally pouring paint onto canvases and i'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later on, right towards the very, very end of the entire course, if you're interested in learning how to do that, because that's kind of on vogue these days. But if you want to get a little bit of a head start and get some of that medium, getting uh, a little, I think this might cost maybe like 16 bucks or 20 bucks maybe for a, a smaller one. This large one is higher up, maybe 70. You, you certainly won't need, unless you really, really get into it. But you may want to hold off before you make an investment on a giant jar of pouring medium. Okay, so um, that was great. I'm really happy to have, uh, I know it took a little bit longer, but you know, in just under you know two, two and a half hours, we made two copies of one of the most influential paintings in all human history, or at least in Western art. But uh, I, you can see that we used two different mediums, one with the slow dry medium and then one without at all. And the, the one that a lot of you picked as being your favorite was A, is this, uh, this one here, A, and A was the one that didn't have any medium in it at all. all right, so just in case some of you are rushing out there to go get some of the slow dry medium or paint retarder, it is sort of worth just a quick reminder that, hey, we could make a painting that works pretty well without it. It maybe is a little bit trickier to do. Um, and I sort of made the, the B one a lot, little bit faster just towards the end of the episode. But it just shows that as great as some of these mediums are, you don't absolutely need them in order to do any of the things we're doing in class. It's just, it, you know, it's a little, makes it a little bit easier, right? And, and who needs a harder life if there's a, a simple $15, you know, medium that you can do that'll simplify your life. Anyway, um, let's, uh, I think, I think that's all I got to say for right now. So thank you everybody for joining me once again. If you found this at all helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. There's you know hundreds of you that watch the videos and far fewer of you guys subscribe and like the video. So if everybody just did that right now, that would really, really help 
more and more people find out about these episodes and that would encourage me to make more and more and more of them right wink wink uh, there's also a link to the paypal below if you want to leave a small or large donation um, very very grateful for those of you that have contributed but again just sharing this video with your friends on Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, you know, tagging me in it to, sh you know, so that I can see your image. We're going to do another one of these episodes where I give you feedback on your work in a few weeks. So send me your work. I would love to see what you guys did today. And did you use the slow dry medium or not? And how was the results? If you just started using the slow dry medium, did you find it easier or was there a bit of a learning curve? I'm super interested to find out what you have to say. Okay, everyone, we'll see you in a couple of days when we explore one of Canada's best artists of all time, Jean-Paul Riopelle. Until then, we will see you again. Bye-bye.